This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu slash FIRST. Hey, Open Alliance teams and fans, check out the new Open Alliance, FRC, FTC, and fun themed stickers and pins now available at firstupdatesnow.com slash stickers. We also have new Open Alliance and fun shirts arriving at firstupdatesnow.com slash shirts with free shipping, or head over to firstupdatesnow.com to find all the links. And welcome back. Week six here, the Open Alliance show. Please welcome in Luke from the Wolverine 1757. We had them on in week three. Some awesome progress on here. And we were talking, uh, Luke, just beforehand. Uh, so your current build space is closed right now just due to school restrictions. So we get you and showing off a lot of the cool uh, attributes and progress that he wrote. We got a lot of photos uh, and CAD work as well. Uh, Luke, if you don't uh, mind, if you can just remind everybody what you do on the team, then we'll jump into uh, your CAD uh, that we have up on screen. Uh, yeah, so I'm Luke. I'm the vice captain and the programming lead of the team, but I end up just doing whatever the team wants. <laughs> All right, fair enough on there. So uh, uh, I'm going to bring up on screen uh, your guys' uh, robot and cat. It looks absolutely gorgeous. So why don't you walk us through uh, some of the progress, what's going on, and then, of course, we have a bunch of other pictures of uh, assemblies as well, too, to show off. Cool. All right. So starting off, uh, I guess the, the best thing is to just look at a high level. Um what we saw is we didn't change from our original idea of a three linkages and a every bot style intake. Um, so we are going off of that as our basic idea and we are using a swerve drive and with uh, these West Coast products rotation gearboxes that drives the whole thing. So the best thing is probably to start at the bottom working up. Sure. So I can actually start at the drive frame and work upwards. So this year, what we decided compared to last year is that we wanted to mount all majority of our electronics on the underside for better access. Um, it results in a little bit of a cleaner space. And we had some packaging issues last year, especially with a small bot. And this year we made our bot even smaller with a 24 by 26 frame. Um, and so the result of that, as I can, you can see, is we end up having two layers to our bot. Um, everything that's not critical goes on the underneath, like the Rio, the power distributor, network switch, canivore. Um, and then on the upper side, we have stuff like the battery, the breaker, the radio, things that need to be easy access um, at quick maintenance, like on the field. Uh, I was going to ask you when you, when you said uh, not critical versus uh... – uh, critical on there that I think the ease of access, I think, makes a lot more sense uh, with that for sure. I was so. like, yeah, yeah Rubble Rio, not, not critical at <laughs> yeah, all. Not critical, like, not critical. Like, why even bother put it down there? It's, it's exactly. Um, so another thing I actually want to point out is with regards to ease of access in both the pits and uh, on the field, we also have this electrical panel which you're going to have um, these D style, like uh, I best describe them as motherboard plugs. So uh, there's going to be a USB, a uh, Ethernet, and another USB here, and just so that way we can have access to the innards of our system because we wouldn't want to be reaching under the bot. Um, and this actually fits very nicely with our bumpers. See how it has a good amount of clearance yeah. protected. Um, so what is also uh, shot right in front of here is this uh, 16th inch polycarbonate plate. And the point of us putting this here is so that when um, there's errant game pieces, they don't accidentally fall into our bot because there's a lot of empty space here. And we want to be able to make sure that if a cone or a cube gets in there, we can just kind of turn around a little bit and shake it off nicely. All right. So moving up to the arm, the critical system of our entire bot, um, this is driven. There's, I said there was three linkages, but you see four gearboxes here. So, there is our shoulder, our elbow, and our wrist pivot. The wrist is in, is more owned by our end effector, which I'll get to later. But uh, in a nutshell, we're using these West Coast Products rotation gearboxes, and we're actually feeding them in with a Versa Planetary in order to have uh, more reduction onto there. And then from there, they go across to another chain reduction from uh, these sprockets. This is a 12-tooth sprocket to a 60-tooth. And... Um, You'll also notice that the one that has two going across here is actually to control the shoulder, which is going to take the most amount of load. Um, I did the, I did the math recently. It's about a 270 to one gear reduction 
uh, on our prototype, what we had, but we, the, eat, the nice part about having a versatile planetary here is that we can quickly swap out our ratios from something like a uh, 270 to one to like a 320 to one uh, very quickly by, in order to have like rapid prototyping. And uh, cause if we figure out that we can sustain a smaller load, cause something like the wrist doesn't need to be as uh it doesn't need as much force onto it. We want that to move a lot quicker. We can put a lower ratio onto that, but all have these interchangeable parts, which interchangeable parts seems to be a lot of what we're focusing on. And I'll get to that in some of the other arm bits. But by having these parts that we can swap out and put other things into, um, manufacturing becomes a little bit easier because we don't have to mark certain things up. And hot swapping is very nice. So these gearboxes are actually tensioned with uh, by sliding them across these rails here, there's actually going to be a camshaft that pushes these outwards. Um, and that, so we have our shoulder drive, which goes down the middle. I'm going to switch to this view. We have the drive, which goes directly to the elbow, which is this one. And then one that goes up the side and actually transfers to the wrist over here. And what you'll see is these very light in sprockets because uh, even something like these 60 tooth aluminum sprockets, they carry weight. And uh, when you're at, such an outward angle, uh, all that weight really makes a difference, be, uh, as I said, for how fast we can end up going. Um, so our shoulder is maintained with uh, these couple of plates. This is a one and a half inch outer diameter um, uh, shaft, but we are either going to use steel or hardened aluminum for this. Um, this shaft up here on the elbow joint is hardened aluminum. Um, but consistency wise, they're all one and a half inch diameter shafts. Originally, we were thinking about max spline shafts, but then we realized that we weren't actually using the max spline element of it. And it'd be easier for interfacing if we just had a one and a half inch uh, shaft going across the entire way. Okay. I, I got, I've got some questions. Yes. <laughs> um, so, how are you? So, so, first of all, this is super cool that you're driving all the power through this from the base. Mm -hmm. um, how are you um, in practicality, like controlling like backlash in this whole system? So that's an that's an excellent point. Um, we are we really try to minimize backlash as much as possible. So on our prototype, what we actually found that was the most backlash was had nothing to do with the chain and actually it was the gear attaching to the uh, hex shaft in there. So. Mm -hmm. We are actually going to be gluing every single one of our gears to our shafts in order to increase the rigidity right there. Um, and then, as I mentioned, we are tensioning each one of these gearboxes by having camshaft that's going to push it along. And within each of these links is going to be an inline tensioner so that we, we can make yeah. sure that at every single aspect of it, there is as much rigidity as possible. Okay. And what's your, I mean, what's your, I mean, it seems like an awesome design. Um, from a speed perspective, because you, like you said, you've gotten most of the weight off the actual end effector itself. What type of speeds are you expecting on on this arm, or have you have you seen it yet? Like, is it a crazy fast thing? Like how like how far do you, how fast do you think this thing's gonna go? Um, so, rel, I I actually I don't have it up at the moment. Actually, I do. I can pull up the code because we simulate everything. Um, so I have a rough ratio as I begin to start pulling this up and then move it to where you can see. Come on. Um, but it isn't, it's not the most, it's not like the fastest thing in the world. We're not like going out, like catch and release, but it is at a reasonable speed. If I pull you out, show you, move you. Um, so like that's the most amount of extension right there is that kind of speed is what we're looking at for the given ratios that we were thinking about. Mm -hmm. um, and the result of that is it's, it's very smooth is really what we're trying to aim for, for controls is less to have these jerky motions and more to have these very thought out, very controlled motions um, with enough force from the motor that it can make those fine adjustments. Cool. So how, right. how far along are you with this build? I know like we're, you're not at your shop tonight, so you can't show us what you've built, but um, how far along are you with the, like actually putting this together and putting it into practice? So uh, we've already sent out our shoulder parts to be machined. Uh, we have a little bit of tinkering left with our elbow parts, but uh, we've been constantly doing 3D prints of every part that we can in order to get an idea 
Uh, here is uh, me with the elbow part. It's actually this part, which interfaces from the elbow to the sprocket. So mm -hmm. we've been, uh, our goal is to have a complete 3D print uh, in polycarbonate build of the bot so that way controls can work with it and then our final one is going to be made out of aluminum and carbon fiber tubes and, and what what i mean obviously carbon fiber is a great material but what what do you think the big difference between performance wise between the polycarbonate and 3d print versus the carbon fiber and aluminum is that so, just a strength thing or, or what do you what are you thinking yeah so when we analyze what our bot's going to look like and mostly the idea of how do we rip our head off here. Um, the biggest way that we would rip our head off of sorts is if we're fully extended outwards and then we take a side load on the end effector. Because if we take a side load on the end effector, suddenly that force goes through every single joint downwards. And so having the rigidity there that can hold it in place or even something at the bottom that is a little bit compliant on that axis, um, thinking a little, uh, we were tossing around the idea of some compliance near the shoulder joint. So by having uh, the idea of, um, by having it aluminum and uh, carbon fiber, we can ensure uh, as much rigidity as possible in that regards, um, just because it's a generally stronger material. We won't like, we, we don't expect, you know, oh no, suddenly we have an entire elbow that got snapped in half and we have to replace it in the middle of a match or afterwards. So we only have a, a few minutes left, so I just kind of keep things moving along a little bit because this is great insight and great info on it, but I want to make sure you cover all parts of your robot. So what else uh, did you want to dive into? Yeah, I guess we'll we'll, we'll end with the end effector, um, which has seen a little bit of revision since uh, our last showcase. Um, instead of having that demo, we now actually have this. I have... This is actually the most constructed component of our bot, um, is our end effector. Ooh. So it is these uh, neoprene rollers on uh, Versa roller material, and we we really liked uh, our catch and our catchability of um, or our touch and grab components of our prototype. So we you know machined it. Um, and as I was saying before, when we replaced one of the shafts with a max spline shaft, uh, we actually kept this one as max spline because this is going to be uh, good for handling torque load and it's a uh, standardized component. So our load is actually being reinforced with these uh, 90 thousandths uh, aluminum plates here. Mm -hmm. um, and over it's it's the same dimensions from uh, part to part as the Everybot. You know, you see your standard uh, over, over your cube catcher of sorts here. Uh, you see the neoprene rollers that would go here. Um, so you know, if it's not broke, if it's not broken, then don't fix it. And then similar as the elbow joint, we have a very light and aluminum part here and the carbon fiber tube that goes outwards to the rest of the joint. Very cool. And so, what's, what's, uh, Tyler knows this stuff better than I do, but, uh, what's, what's your first event that you're going to? Um, so our first event is week four at, uh, the greater Boston event. Uh, the Greater Boston, New England District event that's held at Revere High School. Mm -hmm. um, so we're decently far out enough that we can be fine with like these uh, test parts uh, this early. Um, so we can have enough time to really refine. Got it. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, it's it's an interesting um, strategy about which events teams choose. Um, you know, I'm always I've always biased to try to go like early on week one because it forces your team to like get done but i can tell you right now i think uh my team would love uh <laughs> an extra few weeks of uh refinement time before they have to play their first one so yeah so, uh, it. Pre pretty good um yeah i'm looking forward to seeing this robot uh get come together it's definitely a very cool mechanical design and i love the way that you have integrated simulation and a really lot of detail and thoughtfulness in the every piece has a has a purpose and I think that that's a really great uh, design methodology. So I'm looking forward to seeing it all come together. All righty. Yeah, Luke, thank you so much uh, for taking time to show us uh, that deep dive into your uh, your CAD and functionality. It's cool to see some pictures on it as well, too. And uh, like I said, week four is your first event, so lots of time to keep going, and we can't wait to see uh, how it turns out. We'll be watching in week four. Good luck. All right. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors.
At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in scholarships. Scholarship applications for FIRST students are now available. Get more information at kettering.edu FIRST. FRC Premier Night is back on Saturday, February 25th. Submit a unique video showcasing your team's charged up robot progress by Thursday, February 23rd at First Updates Now slash Premier 23. Premier Night is a great way to engage with the community. Get more information and submit your video at firstupdatesnow.com slash Premier 23. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.